You are listening to the Critical Mass Radio Show, Orange County's business talk show focused on exploring topics of interest to CEOs who are leading middle market companies with your host, Richard Franzi. Hello and welcome to Orange County's longest running business talk show. And yes, I am your host, Rick Franzi. We have a great show planned for you today. Why do you ask? Because Jan Miller is here. He's our guest. He is also the founder of 2113 Impact Graphics. Jan, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So let's go back in time. Okay. And tell us the original motivation or the inspiration that you had to start your firm and take us back in time to that moment in time. Yeah, I'd worked for uh, Music Land Group for over 10 years, finally went back, got my degree and wound up working for a DVD company out in Burbank in 2000. In 2005, it was just um, more of the clients were asking for somebody to do more and more print work, which means they wanted somebody to do their posters their for all the independent film companies that we were working with. So I wound up doing more posters because I was the only one who had any kind of print experience in the business, uh, posters, DVD covers, things of that nature. And I could just see things were going wrong with the company I was working for. So I decided to go out on my own in 05. And it was kind of the year of independent films. I mean, you know, like Big Fat Greek Wedding was coming in around that time. So the studios were very much more and more buying the independent film market. So that's kind of how I got started with my own company. Uh, when I left there, they asked, you know, please don't tell any of the clients you're leaving. And I'm like, but they all have my cell phone because <laughs> we talk to them every day. So, you know, I, I held up my end of the bargain saying, OK, well, <clears throat> I won't tell anybody I'm leaving. But they called me within a week and I had like three major companies come with me right off the bat, wanting me to continue working for them. So that's kind of how I got started. So that that really dovetails nicely to my next question, because, uh, you know, a lot of times as an entrepreneur, it's it's not that easy. I mean, you, you have to really build the momentum of the business. So I'm wondering for you, Jan, how long did it take after you decided to go on your own for you to really feel like, hey, I, you know, this impact graphics business, this is going to be mm -hmm. a good thing and I've got a business here. Yeah, it took a couple of years um, because I'd, I'd worked for Sam Goodies uh, for so long. I really knew how to run an business as far as paperwork, you know, keeping schedules, things like that. Um, so transitioning into it being my own business and doing my books and doing a lot of things, it took some, you know, some learning curve, but it took about two years to really get to where like, it's going to be okay and be a success and not worry about, oh, okay, this is going to fall apart and I have to go find it get back to work for somebody else. Um, but yeah, it, would, it took about two years to really get comfortable with what I was doing. Any pivots to the business in the early days? Did you think you had a business model and then well, did you have to yes, adjust it? yes, yes. <laughs> um, so in the independent market, um, doing you know movies and things like that, in 08, when the market kind of crashed on everything, mm -hmm. the major studios were only um, like, <coughs> excuse me, the um, places like Blockbuster, all those guys that were around at the time, stopped buying the independent films and started buying just the major movies. So all the major studios, all their titles were doing really well and the independent market started drying up to where I had lost half my business. And this was about year three into the business. And Oof. I had to pivot and say, okay, I need to start doing more uh, corporate work. I need to start doing logos and catalogs and started to transition more and more of the business toward that. So let's talk about the business today and mm -hmm. tell me about 2113 Impact Graphics. Uh, who who do you help? What problems are you solving? Why are pick, people picking to do business with you and your firm? Right. So, yeah, our company is probably 30 percent entertainment still. We still do the stuff for Amazon for a few different clients. You know, Hulu, every streaming service you can think of needs artwork. So we're still in that business. And then the other, you know, 70% is doing corporate um, rebranding or new new clients starting out in the world. Um, I'm a big believer that small businesses should look like a Fortune 500 company. So when small businesses start out, I really try to gear them toward that 
um, in their design. And the way I go about my design is I want to know everything you plan on doing in marketing. Like, let me know what your, your big plans are so I can funnel it backwards into the design. So instead of getting somebody to design saying, well, good luck with it, you know, on all your marketing efforts, we try to gear it so that when they start out, they are getting what they need right away and not it takes a few years to get going for them. And, you know, with the rebranding for major corporations, there's a lot out there that, you know, every few years, it's like, hey, time for, you know, refresh, time to update, which is great for if you have salespeople, because salespeople can get very bored with the same old, same old, you know, two, three, four years into it. You know, it's hard to keep them enthused. But when you simply add new marketing material into that, suddenly they're all, you know, it's like pumping new blood into a company. So that's where we come from. We really try to help those businesses in the sense of, I need to know what you're doing so I can help you. So a simple question, but one mm -hmm. that I'm curious about, what's, how did you name your company? Uh, so the year I, it took me a year to find out, you know, uh, being a designer, sort of like a hairdresser, like you change your hair every five minutes. It's like, yeah, I kept changing my mind. And I, it took me over six months before I finally just gave up drawing, like, I had a book full of designs and I just said, okay, I got to stop thinking about it. It's driving me crazy. Um, went over to my father's house and nailed up in his garage was my old baseball Jersey from when I played little league in Downey and he used to play softball leagues and I was a bat boy. So his number was 13. Mine was 21. So the more I kept seeing 21 and 13, the more I kept thinking about marketing, I'm like, you know, it's kind of yin and yang. It's kind of positive, negative. There's a lot of ways to kind of make this work in a marketing so that's how I started the company with 2113 Impact Graphics. And then the year I formed my company, my father actually gave me the shirts frame. So I keep them in my office now so people can see the uh, the numbers there. And what's the significance of Impact Graphics? What, what, what were you thinking when you crafted that? So we originally were talking about 2113 Graphics, but um, I had seen there's only probably one other company in the world. I think it was in Australia that I saw have that same name. Now, I know that didn't hurt me here. I could trademark it here and not had a problem but i'm kind of person like i don't want any kind of issues down the road so i wanted to make sure that everything was done right the first time so we added the impact to try to um, bring that more forward and our tagline is we get you noticed so being an impactful design company getting you noticed those all kind of go together so i can understand the work that you do for independent films you know people that posters etc that they need so let's go but let's go a little bit deeper on what you do for your commercial clients when you say you want them to approach it like a large corporation would approach it what facets of their brand where, where are you focused in helping them with your knowledge and expertise so with my my expertise and i bring to the table is i actually go in and start researching uh, what they do. So if they're a financial company, I wanna see all the financial companies that are out there, what they're doing for their marketing, what their designs look like, because I wanna make sure that my companies that I work with stand out. Like I wanna give you the same thing that's already out there because you're gonna get passed over. Um, I don't wanna leave money on the table for my clients. So I wanna make sure that everything we do stands out. And how we do that is research. We make sure we don't wanna do in the same old, same old. We don't wanna be cliche with a lot of our stuff. Um, we hand sketch out a lot of our designs when we're working with a client so they can see where I'm at and my company's at with the idea and they can, you know, put their input. Most of the time the clients are like, well, I don't know which one to pick because I'll draw 20, 30 designs. And they'll, so they're like, how about we combine number one and number 15 and we'll combine them. Then we start taking it to the computer before we ever get to the computer. We go for this whole process, you know, research, drawings, all that. So then when we get to the computer, now we're fine tuning it with color, fonts, things of that nature, so that the end product is right. It is fluid. When I say fluid in design, I mean the fact that your logo has to be able to move around and used in different ways. Um, your website is you know, horizontal. You need to be able to have your logo horizontal. Other times you need to have a vertical. So your logo has to be able to move around. It's not the old days where it's like a rubber stamp on everything. It has to be fluid, especially with digital marketing, digital billboards. Things have to be able to move around and still be identified. So what got you into this even before you went out on your own? What What is it about this area that, you know, really kind of got your interest and you could channel your creativity to it? Right. I had been an artist my whole life. Like I had no. been in art competitions when I was in high school. 
um, things of that nature. I think our old high school yearbook has, you know, from our art shows, some of my stuff in it. And, you know, I, over the years, building up my business background with working for Music Land Group really taught me how to be, let me combine my business with my art skills and make a living at it. So, you know, back, I, I was 30 years old before I went back to school and got my degree. Um, but I, I've only gone forward since that degree ever happened. It was just constantly moving forward with um, what I do, learning, um, especially learning, because we're kind of like doctors in the sense that, you know, every five minutes the programs change or the algorithms will change and you have to keep up with a lot of it. So I'm wondering, shifting our focus a little bit, Jan, to kind of, you know, what, what you've been taught by others, maybe if there's a, someone gave you a piece of business advice that was valuable for you that maybe you still lean on from time to time, but is there a piece of advice you would like to share with our guests today? Oh, absolutely. I had, um, we had a great instructor back in our college. Uh, his name is Yuri Cole, and it was amazing. We used to laugh at how many people knew Yuri because he's just extremely well known it's throughout the world. It's kind of crazy. Lots of stories about Yuri. But the second day of Photoshop class, I had never done Photoshop. I was just learning. My second day, we're on the third floor of the building. And he said, set your defaults. And if you don't know how to do that, go to the window, open it, and jump. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he was dead serious. We're like, okay. So, you know, it was really <clears throat> learning Photoshop on the fly of the sense of, you need to learn keyboard shortcuts. You need to learn to get these things done quickly and not take forever to do them because that's where you're going to get hired. And that I always took that advice of make sure you know everything that you're doing, don't wing it so that you make sure the jobs are done right. So I've always taken that piece from, uh, from my instructor, Yuri, back in the days of college. So as you're talking, I'm wondering how much of a benefit has technological advancement been for your industry and, and how, how valuable have you found these tools like Photoshop and other tools that you might be using? Yeah, you know, there are a lot of things that come out every year, like Canva had come out, um, mm -hmm. where Photoshop was the standard. Canva came out and became more of the home kind of version of everything. Um, and I always tell people these are tools. These are not like the end means for a lot of things. So if you're a home soccer mom and you want to do a flyer, that's perfectly fine. But if you're talking creating a logo for your business, I don't always think those are the end product. They are tools to get you to the end product. Uh, AI, now that AI come out, I'm studying AI like crazy because there's AI in design, there's AI in graphics, there's AI in the, the text. So AI is a tool, but it's not, it's not the answer to everything. And that's why I try to tell people these are tools, just like anything else. But you know, you still, as a designer, are like hardwired into Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, the basics because those are the end products. And when you not only design on web, but you design for prints, those are two different worlds. And you really have to know, as a good designer, the difference between those two worlds. Um, prints so much different than what's online, and you, it's always changing. So, like I said, you constantly have to keep up with it. Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, from a has has the focus changed from print to web, from web to print? Does it go back and forth? I mean, it it feels yeah, it like really, I might have a sense for it, but I'm wondering what you're seeing. Really back and forth because and I talk about in marketing about having two sets of business cards, and people are like, you know, I have a very expensive card that we produce that's laser cut and all that. And I said, because these are giving to very specific clients. These are the big fish or, you know, if you're selling a $5 million home, you want a card that looks like you are a $5 million salesperson. You don't want to hand them a piece of, you know, paper with your name on it, which is the lower end business card that you can get and hand those out all day long. They don't cost you hardly anything. So those are ones like if you're networking, you're handing them out, you just hand this out. But the hard cards, that you can really put the money into, those are the ones that get you the standout. That's the ones that get, get you called back. So that's what I talk about in marketing. So when it comes to print and online, I said, yes, you can do social media. You can email people to your blue in the face all day long. But how, how many of your friends and family actually see your emails? How many times have you gotten something from a friend or family? You're like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> you know, and you don't, you never get to it because you're busy. I said, you know, when it comes to print, if you have something in the mail, I don't care if you picked it up and looked at both sides and go, okay, that's not for me. And you throw it in trash. You still looked at it. And that's more than you get in the email. You didn't ever saw the email. You at least saw the print ad. So it's a good balance. I mean, you really got to find a balance in your business for what do you print and what do you do online?
And I think both of them work together. Doing one without the other, I think, hurts some. It hurts most companies, really, mm-hmm. to not have a good balance. Well, that's interesting. I could continue to talk to you about what you do with 2113 Impact Graphics longer, mm-hmm. but I wanted to leave some time to also bring in the Small <clears throat> Business Diversity Network. I know that you're one of the co-founders. First of all, can you uh, explain the mission of the organization? Yes, so Small Business Diversity Network, SBDN, um, dot info. Uh, if you're a small business, we are adamant about not only helping small businesses succeed, and what does that look like? We're talking about if it means filling out the paperwork so that you can work with the state because the state's mandated to work with small businesses now. So a lot of small businesses are applying to the state so they can get jobs from the state. We help you with that paperwork. We have several of our sponsors who can help you fill out those paperwork. Excuse me. We are also very much into helping and growing minority businesses, women-owned businesses, Um, you know, any kind of a handicap business, any of that stuff, we are advocates for you. Uh, We are in touch with almost every person out there when it comes to the state. So if Senator Ming, you know, um, uh, Mayor Fair, a lot of those companies, sorry, a lot of those people uh, wind up coming to our events. So it's great to get to meet them because sometimes when you're like, hey, I need a contact in the state or for some part of my business, we have those contacts for you. And we're we're very just big advocates of we want to make sure that every business has a shot. And if you're struggling, let us know because we can help. Um, not only for networking, but through all the stuff that we have available. Is it a membership organization? It's a nonprofit. We do have a free membership. So if you just want to become a member of SBDN and come to our events and come, we have a breakfast once a month. Starting mm-hmm. next year, we're going to have lunch once a month. So we're now doing lunch and breakfast for networking. Um, we have a Veterans Day event coming up on the 10th. So we have all these events. So we do have a free membership and then we have a member plus. So member plus is only $150 a year, mm-hmm. but it allows you um, a chance to speak at our breakfast. Lunch. We give you 10 minute opportunity to speak at those. And then you get all kinds of discounts, like some of the events are free, some of the discount fees to go to them. So, what was the inspiration to start this organization? Uh, Jay Ungos, who knew me from uh, a group I had started years ago called Breakfast and, uh, Business and Bagels, uh, uh-huh. we grew. When the first day I started that group, we had seven people show up, and within a year, we had seventy people standing room only on a Monday morning breakfast. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. So Jay, being part of that, saw that how I had done that. So he had called and said um, he was a big advocate and president of the Asian Business Association, and said he wanted to start this group. So we had talked. Me and about five people uh, were brought in to help him uh, develop this. And we I absolutely love this group because I've been networking for over 20 years, BNI, all those kind of groups. But this group's so much different because if you and I join a chamber, we can only afford time and money to go to two or three chambers. Three chambers is crazy, but you know, some people do. This allows us because we're tied into at least 12 chambers right now and growing. So when we have events, you're meeting people from all these different chambers that you would normally never get to meet because you're kind of only stuck in your two or three chambers that you are. Mm -hmm. So it really opens up the door for a lot of small businesses to meet so many diverse people that you would normally never get a chance to meet. And I'm going to ask you to tell us again the website a little bit later. Before we did that, I did want to turn our focus back to your business. Yes. <laughs> and, and wonder, tell me, what do you got? what's your vision for the future? Where do you see the company going? You know, I'd like to grow the business beyond. Um, right now, we share an office space, and it's, it's absolutely great. I would love to literally get my own space for the company itself. Um, have a sales staff because I, I feel like I'm a you know one man show sometimes, but I do have staff. I do have a web team that works with us. Um, they're incredible. We have a couple designers that we you know give work to when we're slam busy, which we are right now. So I would really like to have that all in one place where I can bring in bring in not only my printing knowledge, um, bring in a several different types of businesses that. I think grow the company more like I would love to offer social media marketing. We just can't do it. We don't have the capacity. Um, There's a lot of other marketing uh, that we would like to offer. We just don't have the capacity yet. So that's something I see the company growing into in the future. That's exciting. Yeah. So you see the small business area continuing to grow here. Is your, are your customer, 
are your customers in Southern California? Where is your we, customer? We have a lot of customers here in Southern California. I do have a client in or um, a couple of clients in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, one is in uh, Arizona, Nevada. Um, I have clients in Vegas. I have clients in Northern California. Um, so we we go all over. I mean, we pretty much stay within the states. Um, but I, I've not had, you know, call for outside the States. So if I did, I'd have to call my accountant and go, what do I do? Because I have no idea how to do money yet. <laughs> we do have an international audience. So you yeah. never know, Jan, just maybe. if Okay, so that leads me perfectly to if someone would like to connect with you, let's say yes. find you on LinkedIn mm -hmm. or find you online, where should they go? How do they do that? Right. So for LinkedIn, you can go to 2113 Impact Graphics. Uh, we have the company's uh, site as well as my own. So you can look up my name, Jan Miller. Um, they're pretty well known on LinkedIn. Uh, Facebook, the same. You can look up 2113 Impact Graphics. If you'd like to get a hold of us, we are at 2113impactgraphics.com. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of us for SBDN, it's sbdn.info. Um, literally, if you search 2113, just did a Google search, we're probably five or six pages full of where we're at online because we are just everywhere. That's fantastic. Well, I've enjoyed getting to know you and then having you here on the show as a guest. I, I appreciate the time you've given us. I know you're slammed and busy right now. So thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you having us on. And I'd like to thank the audience. You've been a part of Orange County's longest running business talk show. Jan's interview will now be in our catalog of shows of over 1,400 interviews. If you happen to be an Orange County entrepreneur and you have a story to tell, reach out to us. I'm Rick, R-A-C, Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. That's how you'd find me on LinkedIn. Coincidentally, our company's website is the same thing, rickfranzi.com. And uh, Haley and I'd be happy to talk with you about possibly scheduling you for a future appearance on our program. And until next time we all have a chance to be together, I hope that all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction. Mm -hmm.